Terry McDade, a.k.a. the Pirate Hunter, and this is an update on my General Lewis Armistead build from Michael Roberts Limited kits. I have, to make them, put it mildly, this kit has really been a can of worms. There is one other kit that has given me issues kind of like this, and it is sitting on the shelf right now because I got so frustrated with it, and that was my Headless Horseman build. The issue I've had on this, which there is several, is trying to get the parts to glue on to it. The, the resin is, it's, I don't know, it's a soft kind of resin, but it is forming cracks on it. Uh, I'll show you them in a minute. They're on the back of the torso. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on this because I'm doing this with my tab too. But I have, you know, had it all sanded down, ready to prime, and I noticed there was cracks in it. So I went through and I filled them up, sanded them down, uh, gave them the thumbnail, fingernail test. There was no catching on it. The next day, I could feel them catching with my fingernail or thumbnail. Now, where this kit is at is back in my shop. I haven't got the air conditioner in it right now from the remodeling again. Um, so this shop can run anywhere from the current temperature right now in here is 82 degrees up through the 90s, close to 100 at times. I don't know if that's causing this. But the resin, when you do any trimming on it or anything like that, it is uh, soft feeling. It doesn't, It I don't know, it's like it's not a hard cast on it. Some of the other resin kits I've had, uh, the resin has been harder. There's been no flex on it or anything else, and it would snap. Now, the problem with the left arm on this was if you look at the box, you will notice that it shows a pouch on it and the straps coming off the pouch over to the sword scabbard. Well, there was no way you were going to get that arm to fit the right way on with that scabbard. It fit down tight on it. The short of, I guess, doing a total rearranging of the anatomy on the figure, which I did do a bunch to try to get it to where it would work. But then I had to sand the arm down, uh, had to flatten it in one place to get it to fit on it, sand the pouch down, the map pouch down, and it just really didn't look good. Well, I also decided to put, which is not shown on this, they call for a binocular case. And it just says put them wherever you want to put them. So you really don't have any directions. Now, they tell you to take the straps they have provided and I guess come off the bottom of the, scab of the uh, map case and attach that way to the sword uh, scabbard on it. Well, I, the more I thought about it, i got to admit, the more... Why would he need to take a set of field glasses and a map case with him? Now, they were attacking across a mile of open ground. They could see where they were going. You really don't need a map to get there. And you really, when you're marching across an open area, under cannon fire and rifle fire, you really don't need a set of binoculars to see what's going on. You've got a pretty damn good idea right at that moment. So I had already glued this, the map case on and the binocular case, and I thought, well, I'll just see here. And so I just took the end of one of my X-Acto knives and stuck it under there, and it popped the binocular case right off. So I thought, all right. So I decided to pop the map case off. And when I did, as soon as, as I popped it off, it hit the arm. And the arm fell off, the left arm. Okay, that's number one. So, all right, I thought, okay. So I cleaned it all up and I sanded it down. I thought, I can't put these on here. They just, they don't look good. 
So I decided to take one of the straps off. Now the strap I decided to take off, they come across here, all the way across the back, and ended right about there. The other end of it come around the front, come across, come up here, across here, and ended right about there. There's no no place that was even close to the binocular case. So you have to take with the stuff they gave you and make the straps that go over to the binocular case. Well, if you just, you don't have enough of that. You have to make, if you're going to do it that way, you might as well just make your own. So, and then if you look at this, where this arm is, there is where, right here, you can see, is where the end of the one strap come around and connected to the map case and the same back here where it come around and connected to the map case. Now, they say, I guess, to, I don't know, the directions have no pictures other than on the front. Uh, so it's by guess and by God. Some of them I have looked at, the pictures I found, some show him just carrying it. Some show the satchel, the map case on it with the straps coming off the map case. But that is not normally how you would carry a sword scabbard on a horse. So they say, well, take the ends of it and cut these little links open, put the ends of it in, squeeze them back closed, and then glue it on. Well, that's fine, but they only give you one. They give you two straps, but they don't have ends on them to fit inside this. Not So I'll just end up making me a set of straps for it, I guess. Uh, it is a little longer. They'll be a little longer than what I would like. The one thing that could be done on this, and I, after as much reconstructive surgery as I've done on him, would be to rotate this arm back a little bit, cut the elbow, bring the elbow up a little bit so it would bring it in a little bit closer. Now, I've tried several different ways. One, he looked like Frankenstein walking across there from the old Frankenstein movies. Another one, he had both arms forward. Uh, another one, he had one arm way back on it. It's just, so that's why, that was with the map case on, so I finally said, that's it, a bag it. I'll take it off. Now, on the back of this, I don't know if you can see it very well, because I've got my tab, I'm using a tab too, but right here, right here, right there, right there, right there, right there, are these cracks in it. Uh, they're almost like seam cracks in it. Uh, that's about the only way to uh, explain it. And I filled them up, and there it's catching again on that one. I filled them up, uh, let them set, sanded them down, they feel good. Then a day or so later, they're cracked open again. Now, if you're going to do this, uh, a word of advice on this don't put that on for till you're way done and just before you're ready to paint because that sword has been bent in more angles than you know what to do with and the hand on it is kind of just a big blob of silver colored metal I put some fingers in it, cut uh, where fingers are in, kind of reshaped it so it looks pretty good. This hand, you know, if they can cast, why don't they can cast this out of resin and get that? Why don't they cast this a little better out of uh, the white metal? If you can't really see it, like I said on this tab too, but there's a lot of filigree right there on the hand guard on it. So, you know, how come they couldn't get a little more detail into the hands? It would have made it a lot better. Now, when speaking of the hands, when you get these, they have, ar they have lower arms on this thing. That they look like, uh, he looks like, if you don't trim them way off, he looks a lot like Lurch from the old Adams family. Or your friendly neighborhood axe murderer. You know, the kind where the guy wanders around and his sleeves are about eight inches too short with his arms hanging out of it. 
So I trimmed him down like that. This, like I said, there's this hand is really ugly, but I've got it about as good as I can. Now they don't have a lot of crisp detail on some of this. These right here on the where his jacket is, they're soft. There's no edge to them. There's a curved edge on them. So what I've done is I'm just finishing up with the back edge of a one of my X-Acto knives going down through here, running the line on them. Then I do it by running it just down through this way on it to put the line in it. Then I rotate the blade 90 degrees and slide it down through here this way. What that does is it opens up the groove a little bit on it so it's just a little wider and it gives it more of an edge on it. Like I said we're still finishing this up a little bit. So that's what I did. These are the same way on it so I went through and edged them. This does not, is not got a lot of step on it. Some of it I've opened up some more on it. Uh, kit, it, I don't know. It's not one of the best kits that I've ever had dealings with on this. I just, I can't get it to glue. What I finally, after this fell off the third time from trying all sorts of glues, when I was start was doing my um, headless horseman, I did quite a series on different kinds of glue, trying to find something to get it to stick, and I was um, kind of told that you know they didn't need that much information on different kinds of glues on trying to get things to stick. But my point of view was on it: if I spend all the money and all the time to figure it out, and it helps somebody. Uh, not have the issues I did and spend the amount of money I did and all the wasted time for all the different parts It makes sense But so I have I've got a whole shelf full of glue I've tried every kind of glue super glue that is supposed to work on this. I've even tried on it. I have tried Weldomatic that didn't work. I've tried uh, all sorts of super glues and they just really didn't want to work good so what I finally ended up doing on this is I drilled into the arm from this way and put a pin in it then I lined it up with the body and I drilled and put a pin in that's right into right about here and super glued it down I took before I did is I took and sanded this as flat as I could get it and that's the issue when you're trying to fit it around the pouch is it sticks it out at such an angle you've got to put a large amount of filler down here in here if you can get it to stick this has had a big glob of resin on the end of it so I just took finally said that's it I sanded it all down it's all been washed everything else I drilled it put a pin all the way in to right about here from the arm put uh, super glue on it clamped it down really tight. So far, I'll give it a stress test here, so far it hasn't fallen off. Now we'll see what else does. The none of the legs, most of these, I'm new to doing the resin figures. The only ones I've done before have been the minions. And what I found is a lot of these parts, both arms had it, and both legs had it right at the this part of the arm right here it was dished it wasn't it wasn't flat I don't know if when they the way they did their injection molding or not on it or how they cast the resin I used to work in the injection molding business where we did injection molding and so I understand a little bit about it but every one of these where they went on there both legs both arms were dished. There was just, you know, where they attached was a dish on it also. I don't know if it was a bad casting or if that's the way it's supposed to be and you're supposed to sand everything down flat to get it to fit. I don't know. So I've also got a resin cannon I'm doing that it is even worse than this. It is totally out of proportion and everything else. But that's another project for another day. 
So all things considered, uh, would I buy? I got so frustrated, I had so much problems with this. I built the diorama base first because I know right where he's going to go. So, uh, would I buy this kit again? I I might, but I would take and do uh, it a little different on putting it together. I would definitely make sure everything was sanded and flat. I wouldn't use either the pouch or the case for the binoculars. I might consider doing a little bit more surgery on the arm to get it back farther and bent a little more, but that might be just too much work. It's not it's not a kit for the faint of heart. Now you might get one that everything goes together perfect on it and nothing falls off. Uh, it's just one of them things on it. The base that he is on, the center portion of it is resin, the resin base that come from it. The rocks on the right and left side are plaster rocks that I cast and some of the other rocks on it are real rocks that I have done. So that was another interesting uh, experiment in trying to paint three different type of rocks and get them all to look the same basic color on them. The canteen you can see right down in the front with a hole in it that is cast deep down into the resin so I took and just cut it all the way around it so that it was actually kind of raised up so I could get the dirt in around it. So, well, this is the Pirate Hunter, and like I said, this was my update on this build. And when I get it done, I'll do a final build review on it. So, to quote Jerry Springer, take care of yourself and each other. Until the next time, this is the Pirate Hunter.